Wiring. I've been doing wiring. All right, guys, so it's been a long time since I talked to you. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you think that I may have sold the car or stopped working on it or I don't know, moved to Tuck to Yuck Tuck. I have, I have been working on the car. We've been doing the wiring harness for it. So uh, if you guys remember, I think I talked about this last time. So we got the car running on that SR20 ECU. whole plan from the start of this car was to run the factory ECU. We found that there was some issues with that. Uh, the car ran terribly and it felt like it was running really rich, but we have no way of, of diving into what that ECU is doing. We have no way of controlling idle or, or seeing what the, what the engine is doing, what the ECU is seeing from the engine. If there's a sensor out, we have no way of checking any of that. So we we scope creeped and we bought the Max Race ECU so that hopefully, well not hopefully, that, that ECU does allow us to, uh, to control the engine better and uh, and it should give us a good readout of, of what it's doing. It comes with a wide band O2 sensor so we can we can see what the, the actual mixture is like and we can adjust that as we go. Um, and that ECU came with a flying lead harness. So that'll allow us to replace the entire engine wiring harness. Problem is, that means I gotta replace the entire engine wiring harness. So, uh, so this summer I've been, I've been kind of plugging away on that. I haven't been shooting a ton of footage on it cause it is pretty tedious, pretty repetitive, um, pretty boring. <laughs> But we, we started, we got the injectors all wired up. That wasn't super difficult. Uh, big thing that we had to do there was just a, a couple splices and uh, you know, like a five way splice on a power cable gets to be a little bit bulky. Uh, we did find a pretty cool way of doing those, those big splices. I found this actually on a, a guy was talking about it on a, on a drone building uh, channel and you actually take your wires and split the the stranding apart and mix them together and then twist them and then wrap them with another strand of, of copper wire and that gives everything kind of like a physical interlock and then you can go in put some heat to it feed solder into it and make like a really nice sturdy joint so we did that in a couple spots for like power splices and ground splices um, that was kind of my learning moment through this. Then we moved on, we did the coils. So we replaced the factory SR20 coils with uh, actually Audi A4 coils, I believe. Um, the, they're, a, they're, a, uh, they're a Bosch part, super easy to get. They fit really good. They, and they have the igniters built into the coils themselves. So you don't have to run that Nissan igniter box, which is, I've been told is a huge point of failure. So we got rid of that, simplified that out. Uh, it is pretty crowded in the, in the valley there between the cams with all the wiring that, that goes into those four, because now we are running more, more wires in there, but, uh, but it works really well. I wish there was some way to seal those those coils into the, the head. Right now they just lock onto the spark plug and they're a little bit loose. I might see if there's some sort of a, a boot or something that we can put on there to seal that off. But we got those wired up. Uh, we wired up the cam cast, so the cam angle sensor and the crank angle sensor. That's another interesting part from from Nissan so we could have done a like a Hall effect sensor on the crank but the way Nissan does it is all in one unit that goes onto a cam and it has two different wheels 
So you have to do a little bit of splicing there and uh, you know, turn, I think I ended up turning seven wires into four in order to go into that plug. But we got that all wired up. Um, we are pretty close on the engine harness right now. And, uh, and as I got a little bit closer, I realized that we're putting all this work into controlling the engine, but we're still running with 1990s technology here. So we've, we're still running a idle air solenoid and like a bypass circuit for the idle control and then running a cable throttle. The Max ECU race actually has provisions in it to run an e-throttle. And running the e-throttle, then we can control idle right with the throttle body and we can get rid of that whole idle circuit. Uh, it cleans up the, the engine quite a bit. It gets rid of that cable. Um, it's just a better system, but it means that I need a new throttle body. So I have a new throttle body on order. It's not here yet. But uh, that should be coming soon. And then I got a new pedal as well that we're probably gonna have to modify a little bit to get it to fit into, into our pedal box. But it has the, the whole sensor module on it. So I'm learning a lot about sensors as we go. Um, we also changed from a mass airflow sensor to a, uh, a manifold air pressure uh, system to, to, to control our, our incoming ratio, I guess you'd call it. So the old factory one had a mass airflow sensor mounted right behind the, uh, the air, the air filter. I'm looking at it right behind the air filter. There was a, a mass airflow sensor. Uh, it, it, it's not a bad system. It works, but running a manifold air pressure sensor works a lot better. So we, the ECU has its own pressure sensor in it. So we're just going to tap off of the, the manifold where the, uh, the brake booster used to go and tap off of that and run that into the ECU. And then we've also purchased a temperature sensor that we're going to mount into the intake tube where our idle circuit actually used to connect. We're going to pull that idle circuit, uh, bong, I guess we're going to, we're going to take that out and we're going to put a new bung in there for a temperature sensor. And then that's how we're going to control our incoming air. Uh, what else do we do? We are, I'm kind of doubling down on our kind of electronics corner, I'll call it. So we've built a bracket that goes on the passenger side of the firewall that houses the ECU. I have now purchased a, a new fuse box because the old fuse box that we had was not a great design. It was pretty cheap and, uh, and it wasn't uh, reconfigurable. So we had it working to do all, everything that we needed to do, but with the new ECU, we don't need some of those circuits and, uh, and we can't reconfigure them to work for, you know, other functions in the car. So we got rid of that. We got a new, uh, fuse box that we're going to mount in there. And then we also bought a, uh, I guess it's a CAN keyboard, essentially, kind of a simplified version of a, of a CAN bus keyboard. Um, this is going to go in the car and then there is a control module box that goes in the engine bay and it's just a, a four wire plug that comes from the, the keyboard into that, that control box. And then that control box has essentially solid state relays in it. So we're going to be able to use that CAN keyboard to control things like our, our headlights, our blinkers, our horn. And I think I'm gonna run the starter off of it as well. Uh, and that should clean up a lot of the in-car wiring. So we don't have to have near as much kind of clutter in there. So it's coming along. Uh, we got a lot of work to do yet. I just wanted to, to shoot a video for you guys showing where we're at and, uh, and kind of touch base and show you that I am still alive and we are still working on the car. It's just slow progress and with with wiring that's the the name of the game is slow and steady so that's all we're gonna do today um, I'm gonna fart around a little bit with that that mounting bracket try to make it work for the, the the control box and the fuse panel and everything so that next time I talk to you guys we should have all that wiring ran and theoretically be at the point where we could start the car but we're not gonna be able to start the car once we get the wiring done because we have to strip it all down, 
to run things like our fuel lines and, uh, and a, then a bunch of the wiring to the back. Um, brake lines got to get ran. There's a whole bunch of other stuff that we need to do. Once we get the wiring figured out, then we can kind of pull that off and, and focus on some of the other stuff. So thanks for watching guys. As always, um, if you like what we're doing here, like and subscribe. If you got suggestions on what I should be doing, please let me know. I'm kind of doing this live and uh, we'll see you guys next time. I'm out of here.